You're gonna let Pop Pop take you today? Yeah. Okay. This one's hard for Pop Pop's oh, arthritic fingers. You feel all safe and snug? Yeah. Okay. I'm ready to go. Okay, I'm ready. In this area of the country, there wasn't anything like growing poultry or swine on large scales. You may not get to go. After, after school, can I go to your work? After school, we'll go to the farm. Crusty's Farms came to us and it just sparked our interest. Just to drive up to one of these barns and it looks like a big jet plane sitting up there with the big fans on the end of the houses and it was so modern looking, clean. We were interested in making money. We're capitalists and uh, we were willing to give it a shot. Well, my granddaddy, both granddaddies, we raised hogs on the ground. Uh, they had a little shelter they could get under and that was about it. And when I seen the first ones of these built, I was kind of shocked they were going to put that many pigs inside of a building and they weren't ever going to get to go on the ground again. <laughs> That's the Prestige truck bringing us our very first pigs. June 25th, 1995. That's some of our very first pigs on their first day at the farm. It's just you and the pigs, nobody else fussed with. And the pigs win every time, so it don't matter. It's just like being married. It don't matter what's going on, animal health is always first. They got to depend on somebody just like how we depend on somebody. We never thought one moment about waste or the impact on the environment. The first barn I ever flushed, I went back there and I pulled that plug and I smelled that stuff and I said, what have I got myself into? We weren't what they call tree huggers or greenies or radicals or anything. I mean, I smelled the lagoons at my house. So I said, if I can ever help with that smell, I'll do it. And then I had a chance to cover the lagoons. When you cover your lagoon, you do away with all the lagoon odor. And we were destroying the greenhouse gases, but we were wasting all that energy. And I said, that's wasting money. We could be using that as a fuel by putting that methane through a generator engine. Basically, you just take pig manure and you put it in a covered area and Mother Nature does all the work, and you're going to make methane automatically, and you run that through um, a pipe, and it'll turn a generator, and it'll make electricity. Thomas, he'll try anything. It's expensive. I don't know what the return's going to be. That's, that's what concerns me. Is it going to be enough to make him break even? You know, nobody really knows. Most of them think it's foolishness. Not in a bad way, but it's just, will not ever work. You know? And so far they're right. We just haven't gotten the economics right. If I can live to be 80, <laughs> really, I, I think it'll happen in the next five years. Right now, I'd just say we've got a system that's working, but it has, like on a scale of one to 10, it's about a two and uh, we're encouraged enough to keep trying. I've talked to people all over the world about uh, renewable energy. I don't sleep much. I'm up at four o'clock in the morning because that's the best time to talk to China and places like that. I just believe that you can take waste and make it an asset. And that's what we're trying to do. What drives me is at the end of the day to tell the industry it can be done. It can be done cheap enough that the average producer can do it. To be sustainable, we have to have permission to operate in a community. And to have that permission, we need to do the right environmental things.